Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. I got asked a question just a week or so ago about a, uh, ideas for cheap welding projects, something that's useful once you're done and doesn't take a lot of money and doesn't, it's not really complicated, doesn't have lots of blueprints and all that stuff. So, so one project that came to mind that would be useful for years to come for anybody would be just a hammer like this. So I did a little TIG welding with 309 to weld a hammer head on. After grooving it out a little bit with a grinder, I overlaid with silicon bronze so I'd have a nice uh, malleable soft surface on the, uh, so I wouldn't ding up machine surfaces. And then I actually did some pad of bead buildup for a handle. You could take that any, to, to any uh, extreme you wanted to, pad and beads for a handle. I remember when I was in school, I made a fire poker out of a piece of rebar. You could, you could uh, have the student, uh, or if, if you're doing it yourself, you could build up your own handle with weld metal. And uh, for students, it's just good practice. It doesn't necessarily make sense. It's not the fastest way to do it, but it is really good practice for somebody just trying to make something that is a keepsake. Before we get into the hammer, let me go over some of the random jobs that come into the machine shop where I have my, uh, my welding area. That's a mismachine part. Parts otherwise good. There's a lot of time and money already invested. Weld build up, remachine, part is good. Another, another side of the same type of part, runaway tool changer smashed into the machine. But, you know, maybe the machinist didn't order enough material to make another part. You've got to make the delivery right away. If you can touch it up and remachine it, it's, good as, it's just about as good as new. And uh, gets you, it, it, gets the, it gets the part delivered and everybody's happy instead of mad. So I'm doing build-up like this. You do need a foot control and you need a good machine with a good crisp start. One that's going to uh, let you taper off enough and control the arc. And I'll show you what I'm using in just a minute, what I've been using for several weeks here, doing most of the jobs in the machine shop. But I'm just building this thing up, putting little beads over all the areas that got dinged up so that it'll clean up. And actually, I'm putting a little extra on here. I don't need to put quite this much, but good rule of thumb is when you think you got enough when something's going to be machined, you might want to put a little bit more because it's a lot better than having to go back and rebuild it up and have to remachine it. So this is what I'm using, a very affordable TIG welder. Less than 500 bucks, Everlast, 160, that's Stig, I mean Stick, TIG, and High Freak Start. And that's what I'm using for a bunch of jobs that come in this machine shop, like misdrilled holes. That's a very common job in a machine shop, filling up holes that got misdrilled because the, the just too much money in the part already and you can't just stop and make a new one. That's part of the reason I became a welder, because I screw up so much that I, when you're a welder, you can most of the time fix it. <laughs> but you need a machine that's got a good arc and a good taper-off ability to fill up holes and stuff and do any kind of precision machine shop type work. This is just an odd little job, a little pressed-in piece of rod going in a piece of stainless steel here, a little almost like a rosette plug weld or something. You know, a little short production runs of maybe 20 of these, very common, stuff like that comes in. All right, here's the hammer. I got a piece of one inch round stock out of the scrap bin. It's just a drop. And this piece of two inch that was cut for a one-time use of, on a drift on driving some kind of bushing out or whatever. Before I do all that thick stuff and show you the, the thick capability of that machine, I'm lighting up here on a piece of 040 thick uh, cold roll just to show you that, you, you know, that the machine's got the low end and the high end here. So I'm going to be maxing this thing out. When you plug the foot pedal in the 160, it, it pretty much, uh, the, the digital readout reads zero because you you're, you got all the way from bottom end all the way up to top end with, with the stroke of the foot pedal. So I'm pretty much going to be going full pedal here, but it's going to be enough. Get a couple of tacks on it. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. And then I'm just going to wash down into that groove and I'm using 309 Main, mainly the reason I'm using 309 stainless filler is because I'm not a hundred percent sure the metal that I'm welding it's magnetic it sparks but it could be you know it could be a 17-4 magnetic stainless steel or it could be 303 stainless and the 309 will kind of cover me and uh, it's pretty crack resistant pretty strong and it welds the similar metals really well so I'm here, I'm just taking my time, washing that metal in there. See, that's got a good bit of power for a little small affordable TIG welder like this. By grooving things out, I mean, again, this is a two inch piece welded to a one inch piece of round stock and it's, it's handling it. 
when you see a lot of welders rated at quarter inch or three sixteenths, you know, that's a, that's kind of like they have to say that's like a fillet weld or a lap weld or whatever. It doesn't take into account if you're going to groove out with a grinder and do a multi-pass weld. So I'm going to come across, after washing that in with that groove on there, I'm going to come across with a second pass for a little weld reinforcement. Again, I'm using one, uh, 18309 wire, or actually it's 332. A 2.4 millimeter for our everybody outside the United States practically. Same size electrode. Just leaving the wire in the puddle and I'm just flowing it, watching the corners, trying to eliminate, prevent a little undercut and just take it nice and slow. Get a nice looking reinforcement on there because I'm going to be looking at this hammer for years so I want it to look pretty nice. And I taper off in just a second. And the other side, same deal. You can take the wire in and out of the puddle each time you cross and dip, but it's really not necessary. And if you're if you're constantly taking the wire in and out, you are gonna sometimes contaminate that hot end of the wire. So there it is. Got the head welded on. Now you could actually uh, start off, if you're giving this to welding students, you could actually have them build up the, the heavy part of the hammer starting with a smaller diameter and just have them build it up with weld rod. What I'm doing now is I'm going to face one end, of, um, one end of this off with silicon bronze. I'm going to put a couple of layers of silicon bronze on it so that i got a bronze surface on the, on the uh, hammer so that I can tap on parts that have a machine finish on them and uh, my machinist friend will probably want to use this. In fact, I, I couldn't find it today building up the handle because he stole it from me because he, he loved it. He was tapping around a turret on a uh, CNC lathe and uh, he said, man, that hammer's great. But what I see it's plenty of weight and it's got a nice soft face on it. So there you go. It's very useful. Having a hammer like this is very useful. Sometimes you need a hardened one. Sometimes you need a soft one. But I'm just building it up pass by pass. I started out in the middle, built kind of a little circle in the middle, and then I worked my way in. You can see I'm off a little, but it's not really going to matter in the end. There's one layer, and then I decided to just crisscross and put straight up beads on them just to pack some rod in there. And you can see a lot of oxidation in the puddle right there where I kind of let it get too hot. But again, for what it is, it's going to be okay. And there's the second layer, and then I got a, uh, a grinder, put a little wax on the uh, sanding wheel so it wouldn't load up, and uh, sanded all those ripples out of there to a to nice smooth surface. And there it is. And now it's time to build up the handle. So I made myself a little setup here. I'm, I'm rather lucky to have this strong hand tool thing. I can, I can pretty much figure out a way to clamp anything or turn anything or rotate anything. But you can lay it in a piece of angle. You can always make do and lay it in a piece of angle iron, a little trough or whatever, and, and uh, spin it around. I'm just going to run bead after bead after bead after bead stacking them halfway over each other and then when I'm done I put a little extra on the end and if I had plenty of time I'd probably put another layer with a lot more on the bottom but I'm out of time and uh, I gotta go make some money this is just a little this is just for the sake of the video so a little review 309 welding the big part to the two inch one inch to two inch a little silicon bronze on the face I use Lincoln Excalibur rods to uh, surface that with and I did it all using a little uh, this gas lens set up with a CK stubby nozzle kit and this Everlast little less than $500 stick TIG high freak welder which is pretty awesome and thanks for watching visit weldingtipsandtricks.com